My particular purpose in being here is I'm the national chaplain for Oath Keepers. Oath Keepers has been mentioned in this case and we're here to clear up our stance. The founder of Oath Keepers will be here today. Uh, Stuart Rhodes has flown in and uh, we'll clear up our situation here because our name has been mentioned in the case and we want that cleared up. That's your father? Unfortunately. That's your son? Yep. I'm from the Concord Monitor. My name is Ray Duckworth. Nice to meet you, sir. Hi, you must Hi. be Stephanie. Yes, sir. Hi, Ray Duckworth. There, the there will also be a press release released within the next few hours. So did you ever claim that you were affiliated with the group? Not other than saying I was on the message boards. Okay. Because they're here, the chaplain is here to say, hey, the state is, uh, has every right to do what they're doing. I believe he's here to say that. I know you're here to say that. And... Um, you're throwing around their, that, that organization and... I didn't say that about the state. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I, 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 mean, I know I him. He, I, John, John is right, saying but that. You, okay. Like you're not saying that and we will talk. I'll get what you're saying. All right. Uh, 93? John, excuse me. Yes. Can I talk to you for a minute? Is that yes. your attorney? Are you his attorney? He, he is an advisor. advisor. Oh, okay. You're uh, Jonathan's father? Yes, I am. I am here to defend the one issue that involves everybody, and that is the fact that DCYF improperly listed Oath Keepers as one of the reasons for removing the child. Even without that on the record, there is more than enough evidence to keep the child out of the household. I'm here to defend the children, period. And to have the whole thing blown up and blamed on the Oath Keepers and blamed on everybody else is totally wrong. I'm not saying it's even the primary reason. We're just saying it shouldn't even be any of the reasons listed, and it is. And unfortunately, the, the judge also adopted the findings as, their, as the findings of the court that affidavit. And so now you have a judge making that part of, in court by incorporation, part of the court's ruling. That's not good. <laughs> so hopefully, you know, we'll see what happens today. It's just kind of the first step. Um, I think that trying uh, abuse of government in, in the court of public opinion is, is our first obligation as citizens. I'm going to stand on my soapbox, you know, before I have to go to the go to the ballot box to try to put pressure on the legislature or or, or uh, use the jury box but by filing a lawsuit. I'll stand here and talk. You know, that's what we're doing here, and hopefully that'll resolve it. Hopefully the judge will be like, well, what is this doing here? Well, how's this relevant? It's not relevant whatsoever. Um, it's striking it out of the order. And you know, hopefully, DCYF will amend their their affidavit. Yeah. Simply remove our names. If they That's all not, they got to do. If they do not, you know, strike it from the affidavit. Right. What would your next step be? A lawsuit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll go back home and, and put my lawyer hat back on and and go jump on Westlaw and, and start doing my research. And uh, I might call the ACLU here in New Hampshire. Uh, they're pretty strong on the on the First Amendment also. And and I'll I'll uh, work with whoever I can because this is very important. We cannot have a precedent set. It says it's okay to list your political affiliations when CPS comes to your house. That's just intolerable. Um, I want to thank you for resolutely focusing on the objectively outrageous issue right. going on here. You betcha. Um, and that's the one thing that no one should ever argue about. It's, I feel like I'm in Alice in the Wonderland, you know, Twilight Zone here. Why is anyone saying it's okay to list the political affiliations of the parent in an affidavit in support of taking someone's child away? How is it ever relevant? How is it ever proper? You know, how, how, does that, how does that comport with the First Amendment and our right to be, be, you know, be secure in our opinions, in our associations? And who's it's, next? Yeah, and, and who's next, right? It strikes, it strikes a core political speech. So the leftists, it's, just, it's really sad that you have this weird cycle in American politics that when the political right's in charge, you know, their guy can do no wrong, and if you, if you dare even question them, you're a traitor. And, and now that the leftists are in charge, it's the same thing. It's, it's the bizarro world of, of the Bush administration. Now it's the leftists are saying, if you question anything we do, you're a traitor, or you're an idiot, or you're a racist. You know, and it's just, it's just getting really kind of tiring. I'm kind of sick of it, you know? And so I know that there are folks like you and I that are more consistent. We don't care whether it's a, a Democrat or a Republican, we could care less. I don't, like I said, I don't want code pink or an answer to be targeted through CPS either. I don't want any American to worry about they're putting in the back of their mind, if I join this group, should I push this button? Should I join this forum? Should I even comment? If I open my mouth here, this, this, is all, this is all he did. All John Irish ever did is go on a free open so, a forum, kind of like Facebook. Anyone can join. It's totally open to the public. And, and then post. And that alone got that listed as a reason for taking his kid. Now, how is that okay? 
I mean, it just it just baffles my mind that anyone would think that's okay. And so today, what we've done is we we got together all of the police in our organization, active duty sheriffs, active duty cops, and they have, have issued a letter from them saying, "Hey, as police officers, don't blow smoke up my rear. We understand what it's like out there. We've been there. We've seen abuse of children. When it's legit, it's legit. But this is not legit, and it's an insult to us. You know, as the letter says, in all our years of being being cops, we've been called every name every name in the book." by uh, criminal suspects, but none of them has ever been as insulting as insinuating that associating with us, merely associating with us, is somehow child endangerment. Nothing's more, more insulting to a police officer. So they're pretty ticked. you have uh, any special message for New, Ham New Hampshire Oath Keepers? Um, my message to all New Hampshire people, frankly, is that you've got to draw a serious line on this. This is such an elemental and fundamental um, right. In, this is what happens in juntas and in dictatorships around the world, that you are singled out for your opinions, and then they utilize the power of the state against you. And in, in what happens in most places, they'll either create a second track of, of minimal due process or no due process, a kangaroo court, and use that against you, or they'll use what's already there. And in this country, CPS has such power over people that essentially it's, it's almost a no due process process, minimal due process process. That, so, they're, so if they're going to take that and graft that into using it as a political weapon against your, their opponents, you must draw a hard line on that. I mean, this is, this is more fundamental than, than the confiscation of guns. Confiscation of your children for political purposes is far worse than confiscating your guns for political purposes. You got to take a hard line on it right now. And I'm going to encourage uh, Representative Ipsa and other guys in the legislature here uh, to do what they can as legislators in their legislature to put a stop to this and to get some real serious oversight and scrutiny into DCYF in the state. And our big concern is that is this could be something that, that could be done nationwide. And I know that Southern Poverty Law Center now sits on the, the uh, chairman for Southern Poverty Law Center, the CEO, now sits on the DHS um, working group for countering violent extremism. So, so Southern Poverty Law Center, uh, which is, which is you know, classically known for doing this kind of stuff, this is their modus operandi, is to get people labeled and then, then sick, mil uh, sick, sick the law enforcement agencies on them. Now they are actually writing the manuals and helping to design the training that's gonna be used across the country by DHS designed to go right down into local communities and they even say in there and utilizing among all the other agencies family services and even mental health services to fight extremism to fight violent extremism and so they're basically telling us that this is what they're going to do this, is, this would be right like right out of their playbook this, this is probably an accident here some uh, social worker here just, just got stupid but this is exactly what Southern Poverty Law Center would like to see done across the country. They want to see us all worried and cowering in fear, wondering if our children will be taken and making us chill our speech. So you got to take a hard stand for free speech. I need to go speak with my attorney. I'll be back. How long do you think the hearing's going to take? Uh, in our last report, we shared the story of a newborn child, uh, baby Cheyenne, who was abducted uh, by the uh, Child Protective Services and taken from her parents, Jonathan Irish and Stephanie Taylor, at birth. But it's listed as a it's reason. Listed as I know, a reason. which was there really screwed up by including oath keeper. But. You really want to get this flag before you, before you go too much further, sir, with the camera. We're certainly going to stand up for the name of Oath Keepers because we have thousands and thousands of, of uh, some of the finest patriots this country has to offer. And we're all, you know, trying to encourage each other that uh, to stand fast to the Constitution and support and defend it. Uh, you know, all of us wrote a check that uh, could even be cashed at the expense of our lives to defend and support the Constitution. And it's one of my greatest joys was to shake hands with Stewart and enter into this agreement with Oath Keepers. And, and then I listened to him lecture and I said, wow, this guy's a kindred spirit. I went up, I said, hey, I'll shake your hand. I really appreciate what you're doing. I admire it. And uh, I think you're a kindred spirit. And, and this is who I am. And he said, well, he says, you know, you're the national liaison to law enforcement.
for Oath Keepers. And I said, I am? And he said, yeah. And I said, you know something? I don't back up from a challenge. I'll accept that job. I said, but I got to tell you, I don't like the word law enforcement. I said, I wasn't a law enforcement officer. I was a peace officer. And my son is a peace officer. And there's a big difference between a law enforcement officer and a peace officer.